DBZA, Helsing Abridged, uh, it has the weird name, Final Fantasy VII Machine Abridged. Machine Abridged was the word I couldn't think of, because it was a weird one. Um, I, I do still want to buy Hells at some point, because I haven't been able to watch to that yet, but, um, Hells? You, you remember that Team Four Star was actually hired to do a real paid-for dub of an anime, right? I did not know this. Oh, wow. Yeah, that it sounds it like something you, you uh, just made were... that up. No. Nope. Don't lie to me. It's a movie called Hells. And it was and the official English dub was produced by Team 4 Star legally. Well, good for them. Yeah. I am going to keep re keep replaying my favorite flight sim ever cuz I finally got it to work again. Awesome. 1997, and it, 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 there's very few, very few mods for it that can help me. It only has three resolutions it can work in. Oh. They are all square. <laughs> it was meant to run on Windows 98, so you know. Uh, Comments, yeah. Is that so? I used to think this cutscene was so cool. Well, it's no longer cool because you see, it's in 4x3 aspect ratio, and everything cool is in widescreen black box. To make it even more widescreen. Oh, oh, did, did you did you also see my, my dumb joke about, um, it's one of my favorite qu quotes from the Shadow dub. Is it though? I, I I put someone insult my game my, or someone insult my my taste in video games. My response: Nice brain, idiot. Where'd you get it? Brain store. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that dub so much. not need a ground missile. I just, I need air to air. Wish we could train Sim World 3. Eh. Don't usually. What about, those... Mega Man? what about Mega Man? <laughs> We're not talking about Mega Man! But you said World 3! Uh... <laughs> Witness this... The majestic cutting-edge technology of 1997 came. Of course! Hey man, back then I thought this was... This was... Just... Phenomenal. Airborne! I mean, this game is, is better than the PS1 could do because of the, the scope. Like, visually, I think, like, the actual polygon count isn't that much better if at all, but it's the, it's like, like the maps in the game are huge. Yeah. And the details and things like that, that's stuff the PS1 could never have done. Yeah. 
and even if it could, it would definitely be at a more reduced frame rate. It would oh, look more yeah. like Zelda. Yeah. So let me drop my sound here. Is it? Did it? No, it's still not. You're just a little quiet, I think is what it is. That's okay. You know how old this game is? Very old. Well, yes. Also, you can't rebind the keys. It's pretty old. Forbidden. I'm going to check out the PC gaming wiki for this. Looks like there are a couple of small fixes you can add to the game. There are enough to get it to work on modern hardware. Yeah. Uh, but it's not like it's anything amazing. Yeah. No HD texture pack here. No. No, 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 no. We don't do that here. How dare you not do that? You need to play Sonic Adventure DX on PC in the proper way it was intended with the Dreamcast mod. I I, I joke, but better SADX is pretty freaking amazing. Actually, the amount of stuff you can you can alter and change it's it's pretty cool. It's a very customized way to play Sonic Adventure. This does look like Top Gun. <laughs> I mean, it's... Designed to be as real as the technology of the time would have permitted. Yep. Uh, speaking of Sonic Adventure, I was sad I missed out on one thing. I found a copy of Sonic Adventure 1 complete for 20 bucks used, and I'm like, oh, I should have picked that up. That would have been cool just to have, because it was the original Dreamcast version. That just, that just would have been a really cool thing to have on my shelf regardless. But, alas... I did find a bit of a more important game for me personally. I found a copy of Mega Man X Command Mission. And if I'm gonna pick between Sonic and Mega Man... Yeah, I, I, I'm not surprised. Yeah, <laughs> the answer is quite obvious. I never got to play the Longbow games, uh, Devil, but I heard, I've heard nothing but good things about them. Jane's back in the 90s was popped here. Hey Josh, you use GOG, right? 
on occasion. Why? Do you want to play Longbow? Is it on GOG? The first one is, at least. Nice! And six dollars. That's... The temptation is now there. Dear companies, this is how you solve piracy. <laughs> Let me see if maybe it's just uh nah it really just looks like it's just the first game i don't see the second one on god that's okay though i mean I, i'm i'm just surprised the first one is in general right there yeah i'll definitely. take it let's see where's the community wish list here we go let's type in longbow i'll do my part here longbow James Longbow 2. There we go. I have added a wish for it. So now it's at 1042 instead of 1041. Nice. You just go down the list, find every oh single God, piece of it. Gotcha! Was almost a mid-air collision. Wow, that scared the heck out of me. <sighs> ah, great, we got more bandits on radar. It's wonderful. myself for a minute so uh, just talk for a bit is it it shouldn't be I'm gonna test that unless no it's not that my mic is working It, it doesn't sound silent to me. Uh, I have the I have the volume pumped up to the max. So. Okay. Well, if you can, the audio's coming through. The audio's coming through. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Approaching stall. wings. Also, unless you properly updated this game, I don't think it would look good in, in like anything higher in terms of resolution. Oh, yeah, no. It, well, it's actually stretched on my regular monitor, like X-Split picks it up as 
as you can see it. Yeah. Or, but the mo it's actually displaying on my monitor stretched out. It really well, doesn't look terrible to me, but I have pretty moderate standards for that sort of thing. Yeah, it, I I couldn't I couldn't stand it. Um, either give me four by three or give me widescreen, one or the other. Stretching stretching an image is not acceptable. Yeah, there's a way to get it to not do that, but I uh, I don't mind. Yeah, it works. I can still see what I'm doing. Indeed. I'm trying to think of, like, what other old PC games that aren't on GOG would I like to see on GOG. We technically got Dungeon Siege, even if it was, um, a, the neutered version of it. <laughs> what well, do I play in Ace Combat? Usually the F-22 unlocked, so it's the Gripen. I switch around depending on my mood. I'd probably just go with default. I'm a pretty plain guy. King? Yes? Suffer. <laughs> Probably some of the biggest requested games I'm seeing right now on the wish list. What is? Uh, black and White and Black and White 2. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, those are... People love those. I've always wanted to play them. I've heard they're brilliant. Yeah. I really would like to buy them on... Dog, because I did own Black and White 2 on PC at one point with the discs that was like six CDs, and I'm like, I hate you. <laughs> That's one thing I do not miss about about old school PC stuff. Get all that data on the one DVD. Come on, y'all. <laughs> yeah, this game actually shipped in two discs, though. Yep. And actually, the game itself was only in one. The second yeah. disc was purely for all the, like, like, almost Wikipedia-style information on all the planes in the game. Yeah. Which was really cool. Uh, a that was for what that disc was, disc was for. But the actual, but the, but the regular disc was just the game, so it was all in one disc. Yeah. 
with, uh, it was the... really, really nice the way they set that up. Yeah. Gog is absolutely one of my favorite things in the world in terms of PC gaming. Just the fact that I can download and keep all of, like, that I can install and play these games without having a disc in the tray is so nice. It's why I have no problem sending money their way and rebuying games that I already own. Yeah, Dog is, like, a, they, it let me play System Shock 2 again. Not only does it let you play System Shock 2, but it also lets you play System Shock 1. Structural damage, wonderful, that's exactly what I... Don't pull high Gs, that's the entirety of this fight! I've done nothing but pull high Gs! And now my elevators are damaged. I might have to eject. Well, well, the good news is that with my elevators damaged, I can't pull high Gs. It's literally impossible now. Yep. And you'll have to eject like Skid McMarks. Today, we mourn the loss of a fellow pilot and comrade in arms, a heroic individual who selflessly sacrificed life. Oh, that is a game I always wanted to try. That's on peace. sale for six bucks. I should pick that up. Also, is. No! I didn't realize that that was on sale. Oh, no. Oh, that's not good. Ooh, I didn't realize I could change my nose art. Nice. A tail art, rather. Uh, let's, let's do that. Now that I can do that. Yeah, I lost that campaign. I'm not surprised. Call sign, enter my own. My call sign is... Darkness. Nose art, we could have a monkey. We can have a demonic fox. We could have a phoenix. We could have... I have no idea what that is. We could have a wolf, a demon, a cobra, a bee. Looks like a wolf with a lightning bolt behind it. A uh, sword on fire. A bulldog. A uh, plane. Ooh, a lady. A uh, dog that's really angry. A uh, rooster with boxing gloves. Another lady. That's, that's not a surprise either. A uh, troll. Skull and missile crossbone style <laughs> cross missiles I guess uh, rattlesnake a shark with a machine gun 
spade with a skull on it, a uh, tiger, uh, another bee, a uh, biplane, and back to the monkey. I'm going to go with the wolf. Go for it. Tail art can be a bird, another bird, lightning bolt, another bird, bird. So I think a pattern here. A dragon, that's different. Another lightning bolt, another bird, bird. An American lightning bolt. Uh, I think that's a Lockheed symbol. Another wolf. Uh, panther. Skull. Bird. Panther. Grim Reaper. Bird. Bird. Uh, knight. The griffin. A uh, star with a lightning bolt through it. Uh, a hand holding a lightning bolt. Uh, panther. Wolf. Bird. Birds. Yeah, the tail art isn't uh, quite as interesting. I'm gonna go with the dragon, though. Hanoi must be denied the weapons and supplies it needs to continue... To oh, this is historical footage of Nixon, really? ...coordination with the Republic of Vietnam. I have ordered the following measures, which are being implemented as I am speaking. All entrances to North Vietnamese ports will be mined to prevent access to these ports and North Vietnamese naval operations from these ports. The United States forces have been directed to take appropriate measures within the internal and plain territorial waters of North Vietnam to interdict the delivery of any supplies. Rail and all other communications will be cut off to the maximum extent possible. Air and naval strikes against military targets in North Vietnam will continue. shall do whatever is required to safeguard American lives, American honor. The PC games I'd like to see on GOG, I know it'll never happen, but you know what I would love to see? It would be amazing to see the PC ports of Mega Man Legends be officially released. Hmm. Because they definitely exist. USS Kitty Hawk, date May 10th, local time, 1,000 hours, weather clear. Situation. By late 1971, U.S. Intelli intelligence sources were reporting that Hanoi was planning a large-scale invasion of South Vietnam. The North Vietnamese had assembled a force of about 200,000 men for the, an invasion, and on March 29, 1972, NVN infantry, supported by tanks and armored vehicles, crossed the demilitarized zone and penetrated military regions one and two. The South Vietnamese Army still lacked the size and training necessary to check the NVN advance. As a result, U.S. Air Force and Navy air assets in the region were quickly strengthened and daily bombing raids were initiated. 
On May 10th, President Nixon suspended all negotiations with Hanoi and authorized the launching of Operation Linebacker. The operation represented a more aggressive use of air power. The bastards had never been bombed like they're going to be bombed this time, said Nixon. Of course he said that. <laughs> North Vietnamese ports were mined for the first time, and airstrikes above the 20th parallel were sanctioned. Bridges were destroyed, as well as fuel dumps, warehouses, marshalling yards, vehicles, and power plants. Mission objective on May 10th, U.S. Navy aircraft attacked North Vietnamese lines of communications over the harbor city of Haiphong. Hai Hai the North Vietnamese met the attacks with typical heavy air defense support and an unusually high number of MiG interceptors. The result was the most intense air-to-air -air combat of the war to date. In this mission, you provide cover for a strike force attacking storage facilities outside of Haiphong. The package consists of A-6 bombers supported by A-7 flak and SAM suppressors. Destroy any MiGs that attempt to interfere with the raid. Keeping in mind that long-range ground control radar and the Soviet trawlers always provide NVA forces with ample warning of any U.S. strike. Keep an eye out for MiGs attempting to shoot and scoot at attacks from the rear quarters. Okay, okay. We'll be back in a sec. I'm back. It is storming really hard right now. Get back there. That was very close. Yeah, right? You anime dodged out of that one. Alright, you blasted me. Let's go.
great! They hit my engine! We honor those who fought with courage and died in the service of their country. Because of your sacrifice, we live in freedom. It is. I didn't want to look at the deals. I wanted to check my purchases. Oh, you didn't? Yes, I did. One of the things I bought hasn't even shipped yet, so I'm a bit annoyed at that. I'll probably have to. Oh, God. Especially if it doesn't ship tomorrow. By tomorrow, it will have been five days since I ordered this, and it hasn't shipped yet. I bought a Firewire charger. Oh. Or an iPod. Even if I can't use it right away. <laughs> I have to get a Firewire 30 pin cable as well, but I'm not concerned about that. I just wanted to make sure that I got a first party First party uh, Firewire charger for iPods. Heading 
away. I took that way too deep. We honor those who fought with Kirk. I missed my zone. Hanoi. Oh, we're talking about the zone again. I miss it. So good. Was it? Yes. The only thing that the, the only thing that stifled the zoom in the end, especially at the end, is to be honest, people not really understanding what a media player is anymore. And I stand by that. I still I still believe people don't understand what a media player is anymore. That's because people just think of that as their phone, Kane. I know, and they're wrong. Well, why would you want a separate device at this point, I think is most people's concern. I get that, but I also get that phones are just a pain in the butt sometimes. And for how quickly they age out, you lose a lot of the functionality that is meant to be in that device. I mean, I, I agree, but I also get why people just don't? It's not... My issue is not that people do that. It's the people... It's that people act like they're right. Everyone acts like they're right. Oh, thank you, Michigan boy! You did not have to do that! I really appreciate that, man! You sent me 20 bucks. Nice. Very cool of you. I, I even think, the more I'm thinking about that too, you know, it's one of those things where that's the wrong word. It's not necessarily that. It's that... There's not an easy way for me to put it without just going off on like a five paragraph essay. No, 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 no! Not you, Kane. Oh, I, I figure it was something in game. <laughs> Hello. It's this, like, mob mentality of just because phones are useful to people now automatically means that this, that any form of other technology is worthless and stupid and you're a dumb hipster for thinking otherwise, and like everyone is just so angry and mad about the whole thing. We're like, getting old, Kane. It's okay. We're, there was a time where the Zune made a lot of sense. Oh, yeah. I still think media players could make sense, but the other issue with media players is a, a much bigger issue that being they all suck. Dude, man, you you have to realize I watched a recent Ashens video and he felt the need to explain to people who might not be aware what oh god uh okay Kane hold that thought I have to go save my girlfriend from our cat who oh, has no. decided that he craves violence uh <laughs> I crave violence Okay, I recently watched Nash's video. I think it was like, like he opened, uh, he, it was like he opened fo uh, ten boxes of electronics that were returned. I think it was what it, what it was. Yeah. Anyway, uh, one of the th things he opened was, in, uh, was a, uh, a CD player, you know, a portable CD yeah. player. And I was like, oh, hey, cool, CD player. But he felt the need, and I, I understand why, to sit there and explain to people who might not know what a CD player was, what a CD player is. Yeah. And I felt, I felt myself, my life drained from my body, Kane. I was like, 
Josh, I'm pretty sure we both used tape players. We've been through this multiple times. Right? I ha I I did have a tape player. Yeah. But I was like, have we, it, it, has it been that long since people use CD players that some that someone watching might not know what it one is? And then I really thought about it, and I'm like, oh my god, it that actually might be true. To be it, honest with you, though, I don't really take issue with that. No, no, I'm not against Ashens at all. Like, I, I think he did the right. You know, Ashens is awesome. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, you know, I have no issue with it. It's just one of those things. I only bring it up because. You know, you're talking about, you know, a media player and people not understanding what one is, but it's like, but Kane, we're old! <laughs> I, I know, I totally get that, but it's it's not even just that, it's because, like, okay, the, the, the example you gave is actually the perfect good example of how to handle that. I 100% agree, that's really good, you know, explaining what that is and why someone would use it, especially back in the day. That's great. The thing that's frustrating is that we as a species have this mob mentality that, like, I can't, I can't remember who it was, I, I can't remember what was said, but I remember, was it, oh god, was it Zach who had said something, or, I had mentioned that I was looking for an MP3 player, and I was like, questioned hardcore about it as to why would I do that. I don't know. It sounds like a Zoomer mm. thing. Might have been Teddy. Maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. It was, it was a while back, though. And Could have been and Duck. He likes, to, he likes tormenting you. <laughs> he really does. <laughs> it's like pushing your buttons sometimes. <laughs> We, I, I, I will say we did have a we did have a very good conversation the other day about DVDs versus Blu-rays, which is enlightening in both we ways for both of us. So. I, I do not think that Duck ever means any harm. Absolutely. And and for for the TLDR on that one, Josh, I don't think we're there for that. Uh, I think it would be amazing if we could get. Uh, we could fit like upwards of to 10 hours of standard def definition content on a single Blu-ray. So why couldn't we take <coughs> these giant four to five disc uh, sets of anime and compress that down to just a Blu-ray? It, it would fit. It would fit, that's, that's kind of what a Blu-ray is for. Exactly, and I'm like, that would be amazing. Like, instead of producing, instead of producing four discs and a custom case to hold those discs that's cheap enough that it'll, it'll break during shipping, instead of doing all that, burning one Blu-ray, making, using a standard Blu-ray case, and shipping it out. And the, ar the argument that Duck essentially made is that burning DVDs is cheaper than burning Blu-rays. He is correct. True. That is true. My logic to that is, but that's also not included. Like, the numbers that I've found, we, we never really figured out if they were super accurate. But pressing a DVD is about 53 cents per disc. Not per set, per disc. 53 cents. And I saw about two to three dollars per Blu-ray. Sounds expensive. But if you're only at, you only need to press one Blu-ray disc. At at four discs at fifty-three cents each, there is no difference in price between the Blu-ray and the DVD. Right. And if you could burn less discs and produce more products to sell with higher quality cases, wouldn't that get you in a better position in the long run? In theory. In theory. Now, Duck had brought up a lot of points that I didn't think of, and he completely understood my point to that in that as well, but, you know, it's... The problem with it is not really the theory of it working, it's more of a business perspective thing, which sucks the most. I hate the business-oriented side of it, because it always ruins efficiency. Well, honestly, ideally business should be about efficiency. I know, right? <laughs> but 
but the the one thing that I didn't that I that I didn't understand about it that I, I guess I don't know if it, if it's true or not because I'm not even sure if if Duck knows if this information is right, but um, that uh, pressing a Blu-ray is much more of an effort than it is for a DVD. Right. So you probably get less errors and less problems pressing DVDs, and the mistakes are easier to take than it would be for a Blu-ray. But yeah, it, it was um, it was it was a good conversation. But like to go back to media players for this, it's it's just that the, when people's reaction to me saying, "Hey, I'm looking for a good media player," and the only reaction is, "Why would you want something like that? My God, it's so dumb! Just get a phone." I'm like. Well, I'm glad I'm glad you zeroed back to the phone thing to, to the issue. Yeah, I know what the problem is, Kane, and this is something that you know. Everything okay? Sorry, hold on, Kane. You, you okay? Huh? You don't. You, it melted. It's not melted. No, it's not. I would have thrown you another one, you know. <laughs> It's, it's fine. You want it? Okay, you want half. There you go. Anyway, Kane. Uh, I think we've talked about this before. I know I've told you this before. I say it every time you say this. people are willing to sacrifice performance when it comes to mobile devices anyway they're generally willing to sacrifice performance for convenience yeah you know yes will a standalone media player probably do better than a phone yeah yeah if you don't have to worry about the phone bits you can make a media player that can play videos or games or music better than most phones that's that's probably true problem most people don't want two different devices for that. They just want everything in one place. And, you know, even if the phone's display, you know, is a little weaker than the media players, it's all in one spot. It's just easier. Yeah, and I totally get that. Like, there, I, I have taken the convenience road a lot. I understand that. But especially for me trying to, like, sit down and enjoy any kind of media... First and foremost, you gotta remember who you're talking to here as well. Like, I, I hate to put it this way, but I'm not a basic bitch. <laughs> My favorite anime is about to become lost media. My favorite music is not available in the country. My favorite video games are imported from Japan that I have to English patch myself. I can't do streaming very well. Like most of the stuff that I would want to, to that I would want to consume is just not available on these streaming services. And, and the other thing that's really frustrating, too, that I, I wish people would at least address. Because I understand your point with convenience. That is true. But the problem with convenience in this regard right now is that we are being so heavily wheelbarrowed into... Excuse me. We are being so heavily shoved into and down the hole of subscription services, streaming all of our media, all of which can go away at a moment's notice. I... I was watching The Closer on Amazon Prime. Of course you were. Because I wanted because to... Because you I like wanted, The Closer. I do like The Closer. 
It's a very good show. I was watching it on Amazon Prime. The entire series was up there. All of it, all seven seasons. I watched up to epi- I watched up to season six. I was all the way through season six. I went to bed, woke up the next day to start it again. All seasons were taken off. Ooh. All of them were gone. I was one season away from finishing it, and they were all gone. Yep, that's streaming for you. Which is why I wish people would have some kind of understanding of why physical media and stuff like that is still important. Like It is one of those things that people often forget. Like, when it comes to streaming, I mean, like, yeah, it's really convenient. You know, yes. it's always, you know, a lot of it's, you know, it's, it's, you don't have to necessarily pay money to buy the movies. There's a whole bunch of movies. You just pay yeah. a subscription fee for the service, and there's a whole bunch of stuff to watch. Great. Problem. If there's something specific, though, that you really want to watch, like something, especially if it's a show and it's really long, like in your case, if it gets taken off for of that service for one reason or another, there is nothing you can do about that. Yeah. Whereas if you had, say, a box set, you know, like, like I have a ton of Godzilla movies on DVD and Blu-ray. It varies. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about those movies being taken off a streaming service because I own them. Exactly. They, I have them. They, I, I can literally put the disc into a whole bunch of different devices because I have so many gaming consoles I can play DVD. Either my internet dumped for a minute and I, I missed the last like four minutes. Or four minutes. I missed the last like 40 seconds. I said it's not like people aren't, but but I said I said, I said streaming is popular, but it's not like people aren't buying DVDs and Blu-rays still, because they are. Yeah, I think for, like, especially new stuff, when you have to buy it on Blu-ray and DVD, people will do it. What, what I would, I think this, this factoid is more of an issue, not when it comes to movies, but when it comes to video games. Especially in the PC world. Yeah. Because everyone, we always get our games through Steam or GOG or something. But that is a digital media form, and you're only buying a license to play the game, technically. Yep. Uh, you don't actually own the game physically. I think to be fair with GOG, you can at least download all of your installers and put them on a disc. Right. They are but Steam and Origin and those other ones, it's just, you have to go through their yep. portal and, you know, and it's a great service, but... But if it goes down, you're out all of that money. Yeah, exactly. It really sucks that that's the case, too, because... Good God. <laughs> and and, and, and the, the other problem with it, too, and, and, and this, this is an issue with, as I have stated million and a half times future proofing the worst part about the worst part about physical pc games is the drm because fable we we both know fable can you hear me still by the way we both know fable all right cool we both know Fable pretty well. I don't think I can install my original PC game on my computer. Because it has a DRM, if I'm thinking of the right stuff, it has a DRM that on Windows 10 is considered either malware or a rootkit. I literally cannot install my physically owned Fable discs onto my PC because of the DRM on those discs. I thought I thought you were going to say it was one of those you get 3 installs and no more. I mean, that's pretty garbage too. That it's was yo, that one, uh, that one like that was before I was even PC gaming, but I remember that was 
like a horrid thing. Just like yeah. what? Like are you so are you funny. kidding me? And then you have to call into the company and get it reset, and it's like why? You you people realize that you are causing your own piracy, right? One of the best you remember our make. Do you remember our make? Mm, unsure. He was one of the other angry reviewers back in the day. Gotcha. Our make twenty one. Oh right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, it, over time he, he well, it, recently he, he uploaded a few videos. He's gotten a lot better. He became a dad too. Nice. Seems to have uh, become a better person. He went through a phase of just being really cynical. But anyway, but you know, some of his video old videos were good back then. You know, kind of cringy now, but so were my old ones. So fair enough. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, he did a really great video about that three strike rule with the DR with DRM back then because he played, he did play do a lot play a lot of PC games. Yeah. Um, he had. Uh, I think he had an Xbox, but then he, he had a he had a he had an Alienware PC. Um, so, but uh, the DRM. First of all, he had you know the three strike rule, which was already bad enough. But then there was another issue. His computer, and it wasn't for piracy, but his computer had two disk drives. Yep. The DRM detected that there was multiple drives, and it assumed he was going to try to copy the game. Which he wasn't, but uh, but it would for, it would literally forbid the install. You know how he had to fix it? Open up his computer, disconnect the SATA cable, and then install the game. No, he could have done that, but he did. He, but uh, I don't know if he was, he was much of a hardware guy. He did he did buy the Alienware PC, so he obviously didn't build it. Um, there was a crack made for th for this exact reason. Yep. So he downloaded the crack to get the game to work. Yeah. And because all of this DRM is absolutely stupid. Yeah, like his whole thing was like, was like I literally had to be a pirate to get around your anti-piracy, even though I bought the game. Yeah. You know what my favorite story of anti-piracy is, though, of all time? I can't remember what game it was. I think it was a Rainbow Six game from Ubisoft. That... That they released this game with anti-piracy measures, right? Uh-huh. And... Something happened... To the point that... The entire game broke so badly for... For, a, for like a certain, it was some kind of like disc DRM that they couldn't release it digitally or something like that. So everyone who bought the game digitally couldn't play the game because it was still trying to find the disc. Ubisoft wrote their, wrote their piracy so good slash bad, depending on who you are, that they couldn't even fix this issue, that they literally had to go online, download a crack for their own game. Oh, I... I remember Guru Larry had this uh, had, uh, talked about this once. Yeah. I remember this. Yeah, they had to they had to download a a, a crack for their own freaking game because they screwed it up so bad. And I'm just like, then why are you doing it at all at that point? I love good old games so freaking much in terms of how they handle just having your stuff. You know, like, you just download the installer, install it, and you're done. Perfect. Oh, excuse me. And then, and then of course, there's Diablo 3, the infamous. Always online. Always online is one of the worst things. It's it's for the auction house. No, no, you it's for control. You don't have to lie about it. It's okay. Hey, the, I, hey, 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 the new SimCity did that too. Yep. 
You know what my favorite? Well, the game can't game work game. unless it's always online. That's that. That's that. That's a lie. That is a lie. You, uh, we we know that's a lie. Well, I don't even know why you even attempted such a such a vile and odious lie. Do you think we're that stupid? You want to know what I think is the absolute worst case of DRM that backfired? Because it's not on PC. Oh. Are you sitting down for the, the world's worst piracy measure? Well, I'm at my desk, so yeah. The PlayStation Vita. <laughs> I know where this is going, but go on! Because those memory cards killed any kind of hope that console had for succeed for success. And especially, especially after, especially after the 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 two the 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 Vita 2000 model, the fact that they did not change to micro SD card is what absolutely slaughtered that console. Because near the end of the Vita's life, they completely stopped doing physical games for most things. You would be lucky if you got a physical copy for something. Yeah. It, it was bad. So then you had to rely on the memory cards, which were ludicrously overpriced. Yeah, I think that was the biggest issue. Like, like it, 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 if it, it's one thing to have your own specific thing for a console, because technically speaking, the PlayStations 1 and 2 did that too. Yep, that is true with memory cards, but to defend the memory cards, at least they were available. But and, and at the, the Vita is, the Vita, first of all, is, you know, it's it was a dated practice. And they were so expensive. They were just so damn expensive. It's like, you're price gouging us on this ridiculous... And it wasn't even like with the PSP, where it could be used in other Sony things. Yeah. The Vitas were the Vitas. Period. And, and a discussion. It was horrendous. It was the worst thing that I had seen them do. Absolutely. Because it, it killed an entire handheld. I, I firmly believe that the only reason the Vita died as hard as it did here in the States especially is because no one could buy a fucking memory card. Literally, I bought the Vita at the time for one game. I bought it for Ease Memories of Kelsetta. Oh? In fact... Huh? Oh? Yep. Let, I, I'm gonna go through and just like... Take out the games that aren't really important to the Vita because there is. Ah, oh, stop that. My Vita library, if you don't count things that are available on other platforms or just aren't really that important, um, I have four games on this console right now. Four games. I've got Freedom Wars. Fantasy Star Nova, Tales of Hearts R, and Ease Memories of Kelsetta. That's it. <laughs> the other games I got are like Muramasa Rebirth. Uh, I've got a physical copy of Fantasy Star Online 2 before I realized how bad it was. And I've sort of Online Lost Song. I have way more PSP games than I have Vita games. I think that was the other thing too, is that honestly the Vita just didn't really have a lot of standout titles. Like there's definitely still stuff you can play and enjoy on Cyber it, Sleuth. But... Yeah, and then that came out on PS4. Yeah, but at the time, when it was exclusive, that was... That was the was... premier app as far as I'm concerned. Yep, the only other, like, well-known games were, like, Gravity Rush, and, uh, uh, 
Um, uh, Tomb Raider reboots, but bad. Um, uh, uh, Uncharted. God damn it! Why couldn't I Tomb remember? Tomb Raider the word reboots, Uncharted? but bad. <laughs> 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 um, the uh, Uncharted, the Golden Something. Sup um, yeah, something. Uh, yeah. The Golden Abyss, I think it was called. <laughs> and and like that was it there just wasn't anything high profile on the Vita outside of a couple of things I think it I think it really hammers home like it really hammers home that unless you like Japanese video games it's really hard to find stuff on on the Sony platforms because like that's that's what's on there most of the time. Like that's that's how they roll. Like if you don't like that style of game, you're going to want to go Xbox. I, I, I will I will say because we were talking about this earlier and I just wanted to mention it too I do think that preservation is a lot worse for video games than it ever will be for movies TV shows or music or anything like that because all of that stuff is it does not matter what you play it on if it can play the file type it can play it Hey, Johnny Doe. That should, in theory, be enough. It really, it really does suck for, for like video game preservation. How hard it is for that to be a thing.
Have you have you heard of the game Elite Dangerous? No. Uh, I don't necessarily know if it would be up your alley, um, but I was just thinking about it, and I know you like uh, you like uh, that kind of simulation. Um, I'm sending it to you, DM. It's a it's a it, it's a spaceship game. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, take control of your own starship in a cutthroat galaxy. Elite Dangerous is the definitive massive. Oh, it's a it's a. Didn't realize it was an online game. Apparently, it's an MMO. I don't know if that's a selling point or not. Um, not usually, but I mean. It's fun, it's fun. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it's totally up your speed, but it, it kind of... I was looking at this and I'm like, oh, you know, that is a simulation kind of game. $7.49 on sale right now, so pretty cheap. Oh. Oh, okay. That's that's a plus. Again, not sure if this is 100% much of a selling point for you, but uh, the people behind it are the same people who make Jurassic World Evolution. Really? Yeah. That helps. Yeah. They are quality. Indeed. I don't remember looking at it too much, but I've definitely heard it's it's a really in-depth kind of game. It e like, it's so in-depth, it even supports VR. On this stupid bridge, would you break already? Royal is on, on Steam now. Cool. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, got it. Nice. Oh, OMG, Josh, dead by daylight's on sale for $7.99. That's nice. Still feel ripped off. I wish I could have played it a bit more. Power of Fantasy has been released on Steam now, so maybe I'll try that at some point. London Bridge? Eh, it's never really come up. Uh, yeah, the F-15 Active, I don't know, I think it was just an experiment. Memory serves. Up for it real quick. There we go. I thought I was modified F-15 Eagle. So was a technology demonstrator. Yeah, it was just a te technology demonstrator to show the effects of uh, thrust vectoring and enhanced maneuverability. That was pretty cool, though. spit yeah people keep bringing up the war spit that's a long video though war spit had a lot go on <laughs> Hey, Exarcoon, Exarcun, Exargun. <laughs> <laughs> Our journey's only just begun. Motherfucker! <laughs> Somebody mentioned me in a video on TikTok. Now? 
Someone actually did a video response to one of my videos on TikTok. Oh wow. How'd that go? Ah, I was alright. It was fine. He I figured some people would take uh, my latest trend of little short joke videos a little more seriously than I meant them to, but you know. Yeah, it's it's dumb when that happens. I've been watching some of those and they're pretty funny. Exactly. That's why I'm like 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 if you guys don't know by now that I crack jokes all the time, I don't know what to tell you. I like <laughs> you have Obviously not paying, not, not not been paying attention. You you should you should send me the response. By the way, I want to see it because I, I I heard a little bit of it. Nah, it was. I'll send it to you later. It was it was fine though. Like it wasn't like it was a. In, he didn't like insult me or anything. He was just like going into more detail than I did about the plane in question. Gotcha. Because of course he did because my video wasn't about the actual history of the plane. It was just. This is what I think you're like if you like this. And it's like, actually, the plane! Like, I know that. I. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like, what's your favorite cartoon style says about you posting a guy, posting an anime character with a katana? You like anime. Actually, the katana is an ancient Japanese <laughs> cartoon. Oh. <laughs> that, that <laughs> That wasn't the joke, though. <laughs> like, it, it, was, it was a simple, silly joke about that katanas are in anime. We know there's more history behind it, but that wasn't the joke. I'm sorry, Kane. My girlfriend had to show me some cringe on TikTok. It was really important to her. That's okay. <laughs> uh, Exakun, uh, this is a combat mission, but I already did the combat part, so I'm just letting the autopilot take me along the rest of the formalities so I can land and actually end it, because I can't end it beforehand. The game is old enough and accurate enough where it's like, you must land the plane. You must finish your mission like the real military. And I'm like, but I already did the mission. Too bad! This is an ace combat. You're gonna experience the vast majority of what fighter pilots tend to do. Which is sit around and watch the terrain go by. Very rarely do combat pilots actually enter combat. <laughs> Contrary to popular media belief, um, combat is not the end goal. I mean, and sometimes it is, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. More often than not, it's not the goal. Sometimes it's, it's recon or something. Yeah. And a lot of the people we uh, tend to go to war with, especially lately, uh, don't actually have proper air forces. <laughs> Plus, even though I wanted to get into combat, there's no enemies around at all. My air to ground 
mission, uh, underground missiles are gone, so... I could check my air radar, though. There's nothing on my air radar. There's, there's nothing... Nothing within a hundred miles... Oh, 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 there's something, what's that? What's that? What's that? It won't even let me check what that is. It's probably an ally. That's 150 miles out, that's probably what that is. closer than I thought. 50 miles, but still not a not a target. I, by the way, to, to jump back to media players for a hot minute, uh, another thing that would be nice is having a good media player that doesn't have a proprietary jack. That'd be nice. Can we just not... Please? 30 pins? Like, there's a 30 pin for the iPod, and then the Zune has its own 30 pin, and it's like, y'all are terrible. They're both Stop. 30 pins! Yeah, but they don't fit in, in, in each other's... No, I know that. That's the point. It's so dumb! It's so freaking stupid! God! It just put in a USB port and call it a day. gonna be amazing when Apple can no longer do that crap on their own stuff. Lightning is just not an efficient port anymore. Did you know that Firewire outlasted Lightning? Did it? Yeah. I have to forget Firewire was even a thing, King. Firewire was only surpassed by USB 3. Did not know that. Even up until this point, Firewire was a lot faster than USB 2.0. Yeah, like, it's, it's fast. It pumps power. It's a really good connector, and it was only recently surpassed with USB 3. The only reason that we didn't use it, I guess, is because it was primarily a Mac thing. Probably. But, oh, yeah, you went to see one of the Mohawks, Exercoon? Which one? But yeah, it wasn't till I think the or gen no fourth or fifth gen that allowed data transfer via USB. Ah, you could only... thirty oh one. All right. You could only transfer stuff through FireWire. Okay, okay, so I am wrong on one thing. You could you could indeed sync and charge through either one on several of them. 
but for the but for the third gen iPods, you could only sync through USB. You could not charge through USB at all. The fourth gen iPod was the first one to sync and charge through the USB port. And the first two gens of iPod had no USB support. And that was because the first two gens had just a full, like a full-size Firewire connector. Oh? Yeah. Oh, God. I got bullied for knowing how many generations of iPod there were. Because apparently people do not realize that, um... You don't need to be intelligent to do a Google search. Unfortunate. <laughs> the the latest iPod model that can charge via FireWire is the first gen iPod Touch. Everything else can at least charge. <laughs> okay. What's up? Exacoon wants you to know that you're welcome in the club of useless information. <laughs> <coughs> now, now I like you for that, but he's not wrong. <laughs> To be fair, to, to also be fair though, I wouldn't even classify that as useless information because I understand that if you don't know that your iPod can't take FireWire, electronics can be very picky with how much you shove into them. You, like, there could be a potential you would burn out an iPod that you have no idea that you don't know doesn't charge through FireWire. I wouldn't even necessarily classify that as useless. That's pretty important in terms of, like, charging efficiently and stuff like that. I- I know, okay? I- I do. I do. It's- it's your way. It's, you're the resident tech junkie. I am. The fact that you don't just make- You could make TikToks about this nonsense. <laughs> yeah, but that would imply that I would install TikTok. Oh, right, there you go with the intrusive nature of the app. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Uh, also, also, also because I just don't think it would be a platform that I could deal with too much. I would much rather deal with either, like, YouTube or something else. Fine, YouTube know. Shorts, then. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I would rather do that. <laughs> Look, looks over to... The two iPods sitting or on my Or Facebook shelf. Reels. That too. Looks over to the two iPods on my shelf and the other one on my cousin's PC. Also, the iPod Touches. Yeah. Oh god, iPod yeah, Touch. Remember I, I, when that was a thing? That, there's your, there's your, there's, there's, there's your media player, Kane. That's what that was for. Yeah, except it wasn't. Wasn't it? Okay, here's the thing, here's the thing. You are technically right. And I agree with you that you are technically right. Understand that that is not how perception works. That was not a media player. That was an iPhone light. 
It was it, it wasn't even an iPhone. It didn't have a phone. No, but it had Wi-Fi and full access to the App Store that iPhones did. Yes, it was it was it was the media element of the phone. It was an iPhone light. <sighs> I'm not I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying that either of us are wrong that it is in fact a media player. It doesn't have the phone bits. No one treated it like that. It was the iPhone Lite. You see, the Zune, the Zune HD was a media player. Even though it had an app store, it never had much of a focus on it. Like that app store, unlike, unlike iOS's app store, majorly felt like a second-hand addition to compete with with iOS and Apple. Mm. Like, honest to God, legitimately, I firmly believe the Zune HD would have been better with no App Store or internet functionality whatsoever. See, you're the only person that's going to say that, though. In terms of 2007, absolutely. Um... I would be crazy for that, because the, the iPhone and iPod Touch revolution took over. But understand that I would rather have not a feature instead of having a half-baked feature that doesn't even work very well. And the, and the App Store for the Zoom just didn't really do anything good. It had a few games which were neat. Uh, it, it even had a rhythm game that you could play your own music on. That was really cool. It even worked with the tilt controls. It, it had a couple other. It had a couple other somewhat okay games, but just it was way more focused on being a good media player, and you could really feel that when using the device. But everyone was too busy being obsessed with the App Store. They were too busy with the big thing. Yeah, because. Consumerism. It, it was it was a place to buy stuff on your phone, and it yeah. was a really convenient way to buy stuff on your phone. Yeah, and, and that's fine. And the apps, and, and there were apps within the app store that let you buy stuff in the apps on your phone. eBay has an app. Amazon has an app. Understandable. <coughs> Walmart has an app. Huh? Walmart has an app. Understandable. I don't want that in a media player. I don't want any of that in a media player. I want it to play media. No. You want to consume. Okay, well now I have to look up the Majora's Mask quote and properly quote it. Do I look like a real media player, Kane? I... I shall consume. Consume. Consume everything. There we go. The, 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 the thing has been quoted. I think the worst thing about the Zoom's internet functionality is that, especially when it first came out, I actually thought it was a really interesting idea, but Microsoft really botched the execution. That, like, the internet functionality, what you could do with it, is you could send people songs from your Zune to theirs. That's freaking cool! Yes. The problem is, is that it was very limited by the DRM, understandably so, in terms of, like, you know, you can't just pirate albums by sending people your music. But people had three days to listen to it, and then they, they would no longer have it, and then they would have a link to buy the song that they borrowed. Also, fun fact on this one, the Zune actually had a monthly subscription streaming service for music. So they were way ahead of before the game. Before it was time. cool. Yeah, they had a streaming service before it was cool. You know, Microsoft actually is are the grand kings of doing that. Of, like, doing it before it's cool, and then it doesn't yeah. work for them but then someone else does it later, and it's like, oh, this is so great, and Microsoft's just like, yeah, we, we know. We, we know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
And my biggest issue with, with iOS as well in general, just from a design standpoint, is how fragmented it is. I don't like how fragmented everything feels. Like, I like I like the universal feeling of a lot of different uh, a lot of different devices. But the way iOS works, it's like, oh, I'm opening an app. Cool. And it's like I don't know, it just feels weird to me. This one is completely a subjective thing as a Autopilot's having um, a freaking seizure. <laughs> Sorry. Oh wow. Yeah, I don't know why. Okay, it chilled out. I have no idea what's going on there. I thought I had to manually land the plane for a second. I usually don't like doing that because I haven't done it in years and I'm probably going to slam into the freaking control tower or something dumb. Well, if you do that, you'll lose control. I can do it. I'm sure I could. I just... didn't feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to like record a video for you at some point for my Zoom HD because I, I, I actually do want to show you what the OS looks like and how it works because it is so smooth and so nice and it, it just is, it looks good, it works good, the whole thing feels great in the hand. It just works. It really does. That's such a meme sentence I know, but like it really does. I think even outside of the, of our like conflicting ideas for media players, the operating system that the Zoom HD runs is just wow. gorgeous. I think what's I think what's worse about a lot of modern media players too is that I really don't think that they're that much weaker and or that much more powerful than media players of the past. The thing holding these devices back is Android itself. I dumped a, I dumped like four or five more, um, four or five more albums onto my, onto my MP3 player, and it now takes even longer to open up my music app. Just having music on this app is slowing it down. Have you considered getting better at music? I think, uh, no, the I'm Android... Already, I'm already way overloaded. I'm already almost overloaded. I got, I'm not... Well, I don't have F4 anymore. I actually think Jeez. Android needs to get better at being better. Six, I understand six. why we use Android. It's open source and you can do whatever, but... It's just so much better when you have an actual operating system dedicated to that. Also, maybe applications that aren't stupid. <laughs> The other issue, too, is that phones are just way too big. You've been saying that for years. Oh, yes, and I still firmly believe it. I prefer a larger phone myself. That's fine. The issue is that small phones don't exist anymore. <laughs> if 
If it was one of two options, that'd be fine. But similarly to all of the franchises that I have loved and cared for over the years, <laughs> it was taken over by the popular vote and ruined. I remember that ad. I love that. I, lo I love that style of Geico ad. That's a pretty funny one. I miss those. Um, but kind of that, yeah. Um, my my issue my issue is that to me, I don't like blows. When things are bloated, it makes it harder to find what you want. It makes it harder to play what you want. And... Here we go. And media players are generally a much more focused, much more... much more designed to actually do the thing you want it to do for media. You can make a media player application all you want, but it's just an application. You're you're just running an app on a on a little PC in your hand. Like cool, I guess, but it just doesn't feel any different than using any other device. But with a proper media player, there's just this there's just this zen feeling of everything being so organized and specially designed for your media. Technically speaking, I would say that iPods are iTunes. Like, they just run iTunes. But you you don't say that you're using iTunes on your iPod. You're just using your iPod. And, and even more so, an iPod is incredibly well designed for your music. It's It's got its own bit of issues though that have that you know in terms of age like the click wheel is definitely starting to show its age in terms of if, if you have a big library on your ipod yikes that's that that gets a little hard to find things at that point also most ipods things that are actually called ipods i should mention like i'm not counting the ipod touches they're just called itouch um they're all 20 years old. You know, that they're they're all they're all getting there. They're all getting to 20 years of age. They're all going to be dying. They're all going to go away and I don't think these kinds of devices should go away permanently. I think that we I think that there's absolutely still a use for them and I think that the more people realize how uh, fragmenting and volatile streaming services can be, I'm kind of hoping that there will at least be more appreciation for devices that are proper media consumption devices instead of just being considered a phone or a computer. Not not a not a conversion by any means. Like seriously, do do what do what works for you. I have no issue with that. Uh, Cyrus, this is an old PC game that was released in 1997. You can still play it, but not with any relative ease. Yeah. If you have an old PC laying around, then that would probably be the better better option in general. But yeah, like, 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 in terms of your media, do what works for you, but I just don't want people to be throwing insults and, like, I guess technical death wishes towards something like a media player. There's no need to be mean about it, just understand why people would want to use something like that, and if you don't want to, then that's fine. I can't believe you would 
say that came. Me being respectful towards people's views? No! No! You monster! <laughs> Because most of the time I am pretty respectful towards people's opinions, unless they're really bad. I, I will I will tell you though, Josh, you know what I think another another issue is with media players in general? Is I think it's it's not just the fact that people don't want media players. It's just the fact that any media player that's worth a crap is so old and so thick that it's basically like having two smartphones. Yeah, I get that. I like like okay, I like old iPods. I think they're cool, despite me not liking Apple generally. I like the old iPods, they're cool. But literally I can pick up this iPod right now and my MP3 player that I got for fifty bucks and put them next to each other. The MP3 player is is taller and thicker than the twenty year old iPod. And the 20-year-old iPod is already really big. <sighs> Got one. Awesome. So if you had a secondary player that was just a lot smaller, then, then like, it wouldn't be as bad. not even that much smaller than the iPod, but it, it, it really feels like a substantial difference in the hand. We've got it such now. a small change can have such a big impact. This device is awesome. Mist? Well, they are called missiles. <laughs> oh, you're so funny, Dr. Kane. <laughs> <laughs>
You know what my favorite unexplored idea is for a media player? Even though I think that, technically speaking, this probably would be the most clunky version of that. An MP3 player watch. Like, I think that would be so good for something like that. Like, maybe you like maybe you wouldn't store your entire catalog on So, the it, Apple know? Watch. Uh, not really. That's a Bluetooth watch that connects to your phone. Uh, smartwatches nowadays are usually just accessories instead of standalone devices. I'm talking, like, put a micro SD card in the watch and then have your music on there. If you can listen to music on the on the on the Apple Watch, that's news to me. Because as far as I've seen, it, there most smartwatches nowadays are just accessories for your phone. Mine has a Digimon in it. Mine also has a Digimon. Checking the phone real quick. I'm streaming. You want me to be done? What? I'll fin I'll stop after this mission's over. <laughs> Girlfriend's playing Borderlands. She's swearing. Nice. She's swearing a lot over in the corner, so it seems to be going well. Gotcha. I don't care about swearing that much. I just don't do it with my content because that can get me in trouble. Yeah. That's when I, that's why when, when I stream I have to be like, "Hey, watch your language." Fine. And he's like, "Let me tell you about this effing computer, man." Yeah, this this computer that's running freaking Linux. Darwin Linux, which is like the origin of Mac OS X. My top five favorite steam locomotives. Well, the T1's on there, as is the S2 and the S1. Um, beyond those, things get a lot more hazy. I am quite partial to the K4s.
Oh, and Shays. I really like Shays. Favorite non-English slash USA locomotives. Oh, favorite. So I can't pick the UK or the, or or America. Oh man, he's really stretching me thin. Uh, <clears throat> what? Well, I mean, this 3801. 3801's pretty cool. And Big Henry, I think his name is. It's also down there in Australia. Uh, like Bulgaria's Dark Mother Man. Bear is pretty cool, too. What you say, Kane? I like Charged Man. Really, man? I I, I, I have no knowledge of trains. I, I, I know, I know, I know. 
Why don't you know more, Kane? All you do are microchips. Yeah. The little do you know that my next biggest invention, I call them nano machines. Oh no. <laughs> oh, impeccable timing. How are you? How else are we gonna save the children from the intercontinental ballistic tweets? I don't know. <laughs> and I am good. How are you guys? Doing okay. You've been spending too much time on Twitter again, haven't you? Oh, I have like every Armstrong tweet that I see. I get, I download it because I left them. Josh is uh, currently streaming uh, Jane's Fighters anthology. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Addie's like. <laughs> I, I have no idea what that is. But I'm, I'm, Before I'm your for time, you, young lady. Back when games were pure and perfect. This is the greatest fighter this is the greatest flight simulator ever made. Oh it's a flight sim, kinda makes Yeah, sense. it's a flight sim. <laughs> Addy's Addy's over there being like, I play Valorant! How dare you judge me about the game that I currently have open on my screen at this very moment. <laughs> You. I knew it! I... <laughs> Come on! You knew what you knew you know what you're about. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with having a type of game you like. That is what I tell myself when I go to bed at night. But Kane, I'm gonna post a money trend. I'm sure I said this in the chat before, but this is the one that I was quoting. <laughs> Yeah, that's a classic. <laughs> so, not, not sure you guys are gonna have context to this, but you reminded me of a comic that I, 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 I read recently about the Owl House. Um, mm -hmm. it, was, it was a comic where uh, the, uh, the Emperor's Coven was trying to, to capture Luce. So Luce and Amity were sitting there, and Amity was using spells to help, and then Hootie comes along, and tries to say hello to the um, to the Emperor's Coven Guard, and then the Coven Guard smacks Hootie on the head, and then Hootie looks up and he just says, You just activated my fight or flight response, and I'm a flightless bird. <laughs> That's good. That's pretty really good. Yeah, it was it was great. It's such a Hootie moment. I love Hootie. We have so many memes saved. Kate, Kate, do, 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 have you watched a lot of My Hero? Nope. Oh my god, okay. Do you know what happened to Todoroki with his mom? No. So, like, I mean, does, does anybody here care about, like, season 2 spoilers? Like, it came out Yeah, in fact, ago, so. I care so much about that thing that I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, cool. Anyway, um, <laughs> so basically, uh, Todoroki's mom burned him because she had like a psychotic breakdown and dropped her pot of tea on his face. And like, I bring this up only because Todoroki, throughout the rest of the manga, will just randomly, with no context, just make fun of his burn scar. With one of them being literally, he's talking about his food that he really liked. That he goes, I wish I had a mother that baked pies instead of my face. And the whole entire class in the background is like confused as to whether they're allowed to laugh or not. Copia. <laughs> um, at one point, um, his dad, like the reason why his mom had a psycho break was because of his dad being awful. 
And so his dad, like, because his dad is a hero, he gets like a burn scar on his face and he walks in the room and Todoroki staring at him, raises an eyebrow and slowly slurps his noodle as his dad just shamedly walks away. Wow. He, and like, he's the character that like speaks very plainly and he doesn't get jokes half the time because he was not raised around other people and is generally seen as like a very like, unemotive person but he just has these random moments of pure comedic gold because that little body has a lot of spite in it that's all i really have to say but every single panel that he's in 